takedowns for no reason. For what? Is there any really amazing investors here in the class? No. Okay, good. So, for one, this will not be a class about how to take every single person in the world down. For me, just like a quick and easy approach, take people down in uh, no deal. And by far, not the best wrestler in the world, which means I have like a quite solid system to take people down, but it's not a full and compassing system, which has also never been my goal. Because my goal in competition is to win competitions. And if I'm there and I'm facing the very best wrestler in the world, eh, I usually can recognize those wrestlers if their name ends in ski or off. And then they don't wrestle that. But if they have like very big ears, then watch out. Now, yeah, but that's, that's important. But then again, look, then again, then again. But every time you face someone in competition, who you know is a very good wrestler, what is your approach? Full guard, yeah? But it's also not a very good idea of them, because what happens with those people, you have to get the grip to get the first, to get the guard. And often, if you get the grip and you sit down, those, uh, ever remember that match, uh, Metamoris, from uh, Brendan Schaub against uh, Cyborg. Cyborg? Yes, exactly. Well, Brendan Schaub arguably in that match the better wrestler. What did the match look like? So, like in my experience with, with good wrestlers who are afraid of a submission game, you should chase them the whole time, chase them the whole time, and you get super frustrated, and in the end, you say, ah, crap, this, you overcommit the guard. And then they pass your guard. And now you're at least one advantage behind if you got unlucky. And then, good luck winning that match. You have to get up and get taken down over and over and over again. That's the first side. Now, another part of it. Um, very good wrestlers. The very best wrestling game is often hard to do in a point match. Like, the very good wrestlers have the one advantage they can choose where they fight. Yes? But this being said, very good wrestlers often don't get many takedowns in competition. And why is that? Because everybody pulls guard before you pull, you, you, you get your takedown. And the ball, big part of wrestling is setting up, grip, setting up grips and grip fights. And once you set up grips and grip fights, it's a, the moment the person can grab and just sit down. And these days, just to touch you and then sit, and sit down already. So that's, that's, not, that's, not, that's another thing to it. If you want to get a takedown, you have to be quick and kind of avoid the grip fight a little bit. We use to the next part. My takedown system, will it work for gi? For, uh, for, for gi? Well, yes, it will work, but it's slightly harder because the distance is a little bit bigger. Because once they get your lapel, yeah, it's quite it's quite not impossible, but quite hard to do shoots, especially straight shoots. That, that's very hard to do. Whereas in no gi, you have, you have a bit more leeway. It's a bit hard, it's a bit easier to keep that grip from, from sticking and, uh, and, and give, give, it, give them the guard. Understand so far? Yeah. Okay, good. So the whole, so you can do it in B, but it works better in, a, in the no B. Because to the second part, why do I really like to fight um, wrestling and stand up in no and top? Well, a big part of it is people like Raul. <laughs> yeah, it's true, like, he's a leg lock specialist. And man, if you keep your feet up, dangling here, you're here, then, then it only did affect your feet. So, if you fight leg lock specialists, it's often better, I find it, to, to keep my feet away because like this, you nullify it. In fact, a lot of entries for the, not, not completely, but you nullify a lot of entries for the, for, for the legs. At the same time, if you find your knees, you cancel out at least 50% of the modern sweep. <laughs> yeah. So, that, that ties back to in, in, into this uh, as well. So, if, I like to fight on top and to have like two points first. In Gi, it's a bit easier because, well, you yeah, can, can control the sleeve easier, which makes it harder to take, uh, to, to, easier to defend your feet. And at the same time, you look a little out, so you can be a bit more risky with your feet. And it's a little bit more slack, obviously, sort of, uh, more, uh, more friction. Okay, so now first we go, like, even for people who are not interested in, in, uh, in, in, in takedowns, because I get that. It's a bit more risky, yeah? I want to give you some pointers what you can use in general in your game, all that. So usually when I teach my classes, I like to put some of my philosophy in it, and some of my, uh, like I'm big about body mechanics, posture, breathing, those things. So I want to add this in my class as well, so even if you're on the side right now and don't feel doing my takedown class, please still pay attention, you will get some good things I think. So the first thing I want to show is like, how to get strong grips. Come here please. Okay, thank you. 
I, I often get like complimented for having strong grips, and I'm not the strongest guy in the world. So what is the trick to get strong grips? You can test it out on the, on the, everywhere, on the wrists, on the neck, and on the knees. Okay, look, anywhere you can grip. Look, first of all, everybody is born with kind of a jacket around the body. You know, your I call the tissue around your uh, muscles, like the, the fascia. Okay. Like, I'm thinking that that's, that's what it is. Yeah. Because, because, yeah, I know, but maybe what I'm saying now is completely bullshit, but it still works. Like, scientifically speaking, it might be bullshit. But, okay, so if I just grab his wrist like this, I can squeeze as hard as I like. Move in your jacket, please. No, that's moving your jacket around. Move in your jacket. See? Yeah, exactly. Squeeze as hard as you like. Okay, even probably a silver back gorilla who squeezes hard, provided it's not squeezed through my bone, I can still move inside. Which means right now, you still have two degrees of freedom you have to put them with. I can throw it in, I can roll it out. Which means, everything else combined, the whole J game, like a complexity factor two. You understand? So, like I always say, like, the whole game is about this, 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 and this. And any of those modes you take away, like, like a... Square root, the factor of complexity, which is still a man's number, but, but it's a big thing. And the, like the only thing I'm fighting when I'm doing jiu-jitsu is always like try to limit options, try to get complexity out of the game. I'm very slow. I'm la not lazy, but, but I'm but like no, I'm, I'm quite slow. So the more less complex, like a very good um, explosive fighter, will have the advantage if the game is very complex. If we can limit to just two or three options and stick around that pocket all the time, you can frustrate the guy and, and that's how you can, even as a less proficient, less complete fighter, you can, you can win against more complete fighters if you stick it into your pocket. Understand? So, so first of all, I will do this. If I just squeeze you, we go around, that's hard. Right? I cannot stop that. But what you do is you exaggerate your grip. And now you twist back. Now twist your jacket. That's hard, right? Now rotate that side, please. You feel the problem right now? Okay, we wrote the other side. Great. So now we got two things. He can still roll it both sides, but he got the pattern for least resistance, which will, which, uh, well, can be chosen, can be chosen, but that is, that is uh, what I want, to be honest. And he can choose the pattern of most resistance, which strong people will be able to fight through, but it will cost him more energy and have time to react to that. Got right, that? So try to do. Just a regular grip, bring it around, and then you get the exaggerated grip and you get this. How do you get it? Well, it's a, it's a thing, like I can just maybe grab, grab, and still start to, It's like snake bite. Snake bite so it stops both because now I've got patient to both sides and now you're kind of more stuck. Yes? And I can do the opposite as well. I can do this grip or I can do this grip and twist back. See? And look at this one on my hand. This is one thing I can squeeze my hand fully, or can you just like the, the, I'm trying to stop the bone from rotating. You try to move now. Feel the difference? <coughs> now, break my grip. Break the grip with just one hand. Hard, right? Break with the second hand. Okay, okay. and then you can react to that. Maybe it comes with the second hand. And great, but now you can fight this one. Got that? The neck. If I just do this, rotate left and right. Great. You can give more freedom, but I exaggerate the grip. See? Now twist back. You put tension on the fascia, so try to move now. Can you feel the difference? Good. The knees, that's what's going to be important today. Because today is going to be about shooting. I want to get to the legs. Because here, very complex. Good wrestlers will beat you every time. Well, good wrestlers will beat you there as well. But at least, if you're there, you can go to half guard, which is like the, the pussy version of wrestling, which I've been fighting my whole life. So, on the knees, and on the knee, then this is going to be specific to the class for today. But you can rotate his knees, both sides. Again, complexity times two. But if I go around the grip, go here and then squeeze, you try to rotate your knee now. Again, rotate that side. That's pivoting. That's pivoting. Okay? It's fair to pivot, but not now. So just rotate and rotate the other side. All right. Okay, good. Um, okay, let's go with this first. Test it out for a few seconds. <laughs> and then we go to the next part. I don't want to be an asshole, but 
Maar dan probeer ik iets. Look, you have to have your, you have to have your responsibility when you're in a class. Huh? To try to do what I say. Okay? And some things I never can get in my head. And, and uh, as a student, you have a responsibility. Right? If I can give all the information you like, but you have to pay attention. So I see some people just do this. All feels good. Well, I, that's something I, I cannot get my head around because I've just been talking for 10 minutes about exaggerating. It's one simple concept. Right? You can mess up. You can mess up. And if I show you this and I say it's wrong, and do the same thing again, it's still going to be wrong. So, I, like in my students, I allow them to make as many mistakes as they like. But if they, if they make three, four, five mistakes in a row, I start to be less nice. And that's my personality problem. Like in a perfect world, I would have a limited patience. <laughs> but when you say to hit your grips and twist back, I guess it's bad to have an open up bone. Of course it is. Well, maybe it is. It's more dangerous than ever close to that one, but it's a part of it that you can catch and you can go back. And your fingers, see, they get kind of sticky. It's like, like Spider-Man here. One more thing. So I ask, uh, ask uh, one group here, uh, if you were like, what is, what is more pressure? A needle or a fist in one spot? A needle has more pressure, yes? So that means if I divide my grip over a whole area, I will have squeeze over the whole area, but I will have less squeeze in one point. So what I like to do is like that. I like to like, use like these two fingers mostly, and the other three two or three fingers I use I close because otherwise they can grab them and break them. So I close them, but it's mostly about, about the top two hands, see? And then when you fight wrestling like that, this is like a fun game to play. You can go explosive, yeah? and that will give you random results, okay? But I want to have like repeatable results. It's like mountain climbing, so, so I steer. And maybe I will twist back, okay, and bump. And then we can go. Maybe now I will just back and straighten maybe, so it opens back in, and then you go. See? And again, use this game to slowly climb each other. And I will choose to push my head and run away, and push him away, okay? And then we can rest assured in the fact that if he keeps doing it over and over again, maybe, hopefully, he will lose more energy. And at the same time, we can push the pace, push the pace, put the mat back on the edge of the mat, and then get reset it in the middle without penalties because the rules suck. But it's the way it is. If you're MMA, you would get that advantage. So now, one more thing about the leg grip. Uh, open your legs, please. A little bit. Okay, good. So often what I see people do when they shoot is they go around the legs and they wrap the both hands around each other. And it's an okay thing to do if the legs are close to each other. Then you can do this. It's perfect. It's probably even the best scenario for me to take someone now. But if the knees are more open, and I grab my hands completely around like this, can I open your knees, please? Yeah. Well, he can jump on the floor, I can do anything, but at the very least, try to just stay there. I cannot really roll. And even if I take the roll backwards down, so even if I nice see <laughs> so it falls backwards down, I can go right through, I can go over, I can get whatever you like, but open your legs, please. Yeah, open your legs. My head is out of the line, push my face away. I expose myself to that planet stuff, <laughs> like Robert Mark, which is amazing, yeah? So that's, that's the downside of that. Okay, now, we're gonna go end game first. So what is the game gonna be? And there's more scenarios possible. And I'm gonna see how far I get. I really like to talk. So, when I go shoot right in front of you, and I will extend this hip, I'm gonna like push them here, without falling, extend your hip, I bump you to a wall, okay? A knight with a sword and like a, a, a knight with a sword and a shield. Does he walk like this? Maybe in a parade, but but a, a knight will usually walk shield first and be at an angle. See, you break with your shield. You step every once in a while with your own gun to protect the shield. Same as the boxing shoulder, boxing stance. Like except sumo wrestling, standard. I don't really know any martial arts. It's like a symmetrical stance. And maybe even there I'm wrong. Yeah. But so what I want to have, I want to have the same thing. See when I'm here when I'm in the, in the position. So what I want to do, I want to enter like slightly diagonal and I want to be deep, not too deep. Because now I'm out of that, well, that one thing or extend your hip. I get squashed here, yeah, I've got to be kind of here. So my knee a little bit deep. Then next thing, I want to exaggerate my grips here, see? And I want to do one motion, see? Like a twist and close my elbows. So like I said, if I do this, my elbows open. My whole focus is to close my elbows, and only this grip is important. I do not need to grip this leg. So I'm gonna do from here, so you can tighten, squeeze, and then you do this motion. At 
it. My arm here, if I catch like that, look what happens to my elbow. It's kind of, it's kind of loose, right? Now, I, I close. If I just step back here like this, Robin, it's still hard, right? And I squeeze, see, this is it. And I'm really, like a very slow fighter, I'm willing to spend here the better of the match. No problem. My head down, push my head down, please. That's a problem. Structural problem. Put your head up, push it, please. So the very big thing, like I said last time, was about intention. It's not put your head up and that's it, it was put my head down. No. You should have to think about that. Like, often when I, when, I, when I coach my beginners in the gym, I say, put your head up. And the thing, that's it, push my head down. So, so put your head up and have the intention to stay. If it's like a slow paced match, you go like, and every time I breathe out, I put more pressure. So you try to move, Raul? Now we can talk. Now it's a fight. If I don't lose my grips, now it's a fight between our courts. Try to remove my attachment, please. Good. We have a match going on. Now the punch will move the best in the, in the courts. So let's go on with that. So again, the, sh the shoot is going to be the, the setup is going to be the last part we do. So I'm going to be just close in, diagonal angle. Exaggerate my grips, don't care about the grip, just stick to the leg, exaggerate the grip. Now this will don't do this. You go here, you twist your feet, see? So my, uh, my bottom body, my, my legs, wait, my knees twist, and now my body also rotates in the face. Pop. That's it. And you stay small, you push it over, so you push it forward, I can see. That's the game. You're gonna be there, playing. 10, 20, 30 percent. It's probably going to be 60 percent, but don't go over 60 percent. Okay, let's try. Go. Guys, stop, stop. Freeze. Get the position again. Get the position again. Thank you for making this mistake. I don't have to repeat it once. Okay. No, stay, stay, stay. I'm not gonna make it, it's just gonna be useful for everybody. Look, how do you like to carry weights? Like this, this, like this, or like this. Huh? You want to be below the weight, right? If you carry the weight, it's a little bit heavy. So I want you to be exactly here. One more thing, do not reach with your arms. That's how we get taken. Pretty much is less about, a big part about defending underhooks. If you go here, that's when the Mopopa comes in. It's also a form of underhook with, with the leg. So you want to be here really fine. Grab, go in, see? And now go deep with your knee. And it's not the hands first, then the body. It's the core brings the hands to the, to, to, to the bottom, right? But when I, when I punch, I'm not doing this, eh? No. Your, well, your, your body brings the punch to the other guy. It's not, eh? Then this. That's a good word, but okay, so try B for one line. Okay, let's go. Can you use it, please? Look at my hands. It looks kind of okay, but the same thing is it's about the details, right? And the cool thing about the details is if you learn it here, you can you can use it in different parts of your game as well. Even if you don't like lay on your back, please. My, my guard pass is maybe just with those. Just be here, squeeze it. It's, it's universal, what I'm showing you. So back down. Back down. Yeah. So look. Legs open. Don't be here. Be deep with your knee. Okay. Then exaggerate your grips. Because we can put the rotation. And at the same time, it's still straight. I want, to, I want to break the structure. And the strongest constant force a uh, person can make, no, the strongest explosive force a person can make is rotational force. Think about this. Don't move up. The strongest constant pressure a person can give. This is weight. You can keep this up forever. And the constant push you can give is probably hip pressure and even better, single hip pressure. It's the strongest constant lift a person can make without getting tired. The most explosive, like a br brusque motion you can make is like a, how do you call this? Like a hong ball swing, I guess. This is basically it. We're just on the other side. So if I'm, I enter straight here, I catch the legs, exaggerate the grip, and this hand sticks. Look at this hand. This is kind of okay. I put my thumb inside, what happens to my elbow? 
it opens, and then my arm gets reached, I have to rotate the hand inside and squeeze, like even the fingers matter. See, you're gonna see this in my arm bar class on uh, the last day, on Saturday, about the fingers. So I'm, I'm here, my arms are open, see now, I twist my legs first, and my, shoulder, my body's gonna follow me, I'm gonna sit. Will this work? Yes or no? Well, that really depends. But it's a very sudden, quick motion, like in theory, most about mirroring and reacting, but these are some of the things. If I do something explode, it's always with the hip and the rotation. See? And then you can exaggerate again and pull it back. See? Right now, how is the thing I'm going to be? Well, I'm not even taking him down right now because he's in balance. I want to be uncomfortable, so squeeze. See, now, what is he going to do? Okay, I look great. See, go back. Look at my hand here. He takes a step back. He's going to hook my hand behind his leg. See, now I'm out of balance on this, so I'm going to do I'm going to twist again. So the biggest thing is always follow his rotation. Now go back please. What I don't want to do right now, you're not allowed to counter rotate yet. So we stay here, go back. Exaggerate the grip. Give me sitting here. So rotate. So I'm gonna go here. He rotate the other side. No, that's a step, not step, just rotate. Yeah. That's it. We're not going to do this yet. You keep this rotation. You can step backwards if you like. Step backwards. That should be hard. See, step, step, step. Huge step. And by putting my hands here, I can generate lift in this leg. See? Grab and you'll lose it. So play a little bit more with this. And then we go back. Okay, let's try it. Go. So I would suggest you learn this. See, is put yourself in a position a lot. And over time, like I said, look, I like a lot of 30% rolling, positional rolling, okay? And you always agree to each other to not start breaking grips. Why should you not break grips initially? Does anyone have an idea about this? Otherwise, you don't learn how to exert the pressure and you don't learn the position because they strip. Yes, look, if once you start going down a path of break, how many, okay, let's, uh, let's talk about this first. How many positions are there in Jiu Jitsu? Well, probably more than are atoms in the visible universe. 100 percent sure, just like with chess. And why is it? Because, well, this is a position, this is a position, this is a position. You can put your hands everywhere. So you can define positions by by actually by your connections. So where are your hands? Where are your feet? Where are all your connections to the other person's body? Once you define that, then the only game there is is Flexion is the, is the core motions and the pivots. Okay? And there is that another hour that I can explain to you how you can use your core motions to use them on a, on a stand up match as well. But for example, if I want to pull someone down, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to grab, I'm going to do this motion and step back. This works, but it's snap, it's dangerous for your opponent. So that's the altruistic reason. The selfish reason, I get tired and I expose myself. And if I go like this, see? So downward pressure is generated by this, upward pressure is generated by this. Rotation of doing this, you understand? And that's what I really love about Ruben's systems with this fixed grip fighting. And I think also, why do these old full wrestling styles work with fixed grips? Probably it's like to make rules easy to get further to understand. But also, I believe, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I believe it teaches like your nation about the things that really matter. Connection, tightness, and, and, and that's it. And maybe that's wrong, but I don't care because it still works for me, okay? So now, we define this position, that's good. And then you can see, what's, once you've defined your, your grips, your connections, your tightness, then you can see what is actually happening here. And the, my first thing is always block my, make my opponent's motion as hard as possible. Even if I'm like a 20 kilo gram boy fighting a silverback gorilla, it's not gonna do a lot. But I can still make it harder than most 20 kilogram boys against the silverback gorilla, right? So now, once I'm attached, see, I'm gonna see how I can, can I inhibit motion so the guy has to get tired. And at the same time, when, it's, when I make it hard for him to move, it's slower and I can see and I have more time to think how I can use it to my advantage. And secondly, I'm gonna see how I can use, use, my, use this motion. Hold on, please. So look, so the, the break in the posture is also tied to how we enter. The entering part is going to be the last one, okay? So this is what you should train later. Because even if your entry sucks, which is the hardest part of the game, also the most dangerous part of the game, because you can bump into heads and fists, yeah? even if, if, you, if you, at some point you manage to grab both legs in a total chaos, you can work from there. 
But the best setup to get here will not help you if you cannot fight from there. And usually the, the setup comes in reverse. Okay, so once you're here, you enter like, like 45 degrees mostly, and then you make a 45 degree twist. So for you, catch in, step, step. See, so I made hops from here, 45, oh, no, 90, 45 degree twist, no, 90 degree, 90 degree twist. So step, step. Mathematics was never my strongest point. And it was geometry. So here, pull it back in and squeeze. Okay, look, now it's possible it's kind of broken. Now look, if Raul rotates more, see, my hand starts to dig into this pocket. See? And I can start, see, walking around, and start putting it on this side of the foot. Now, if you really don't get that part, what I suggest that you can do on training, go back here, is to again train the end point. Where do you want to get the action and pressure you need? To bring him there is the same as we need to take him down. So I can ask my partner, how would you like to fall? So please fall with me, please. Fall, 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 fall. I'll play your side for please. Yeah. And I'm gonna like, reach a wire and squeeze and try to get back up to reverse motion. Now. So don't twist your rotation, you have to get back up the way we came. Slowly, you can, right? Okay, so I'm gonna give a little bit more space. Okay, give up. That's fine, don't, don't fall, okay? So if I push, I'm going to lift your head up, please. Yeah. And if I rotate, push my head away, please. Well, I want it to be kind of away because it just helps my rotation. See? Try to get your head legs out. You can definitely do that, but I want to switch your rotation. I'm going like, to move maybe more scrambling. But... So you can go like 100% sweat, 10% until you're back up. And the hardest part of every technique is always the center, but everything is in balance. Okay, so here you can ask, okay, put yourself a bit out of there. Put your, put your weight more on this leg, please. Great, five minutes, now let's go. Now stay, look, and right up in the moment, and I will accept to your butt, please. Here you go neutral, I go neutral. Got that? So again, let's see what time it is. Play with this with a, for this with a few seconds, and then we go back to this. how we get society from what's happening today. So when we're here, look, what's happening here? Freeze. Let's analyze this position. So what is off? What is what is the problem? What's your name, please? Sasha. Sasha, what is the problem over here? First of all, I would say, stick your head behind. But now, what is the problem here right now? Please, guess. It doesn't matter, it matter if you make mistakes. You can make mistakes if you learn from them. Failure is good. It helps about his head. Sorry? It helps about his head. That's not necessarily a problem. Elbow. Elbows could be squeezed, yes. But it's not the main thing. Because even if your elbows are open, it means he can get out. He's That's the biggest sides. problem. He's between the legs. He's in line with him. I'm sorry? They're, he's in line, he's not on the They're square. That can happen. That can happen. It could, it's, it's the whole thing, like it's not ideal. But what is the main problem right now, right here? What is gonna happen? What are you gonna do right now? The way, the way, haha, <laughs> exactly, look, freeze, go back one step, go back, that's one thing. But even if he sticks, his hip says we're rotating that side. What does his base say? Stop that rotation or allow that rotation? Yeah, because if you're here, you're out of balance on that side. You don't need, you, you can learn perfectly from YouTube if you understand these kind of things. So what he has to do, look, probably be neutral, but he has to do the same thing, do the same thing. Counter rotation. See, now he's sticking, rotate away, please. Okay, now go back. So this happens often in the gym, eh? you do this correct. Now expose your rotate. Yeah. And maybe it falls, now it didn't work. Well, because it was the first time. So now I say, slowly build pressure in your rotation. And rotation is always this. Look over there, please. No, no, look over there. And now try to rotate there, why don't you go over there? Do that, please. Doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. Well, because, because if you roll your neck higher, the body cannot follow. But the same thing applies here if you keep your head in the middle. Your rotation is also not ideal. 
And all the song, head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. I believe Helio Gracie made it just to teach us, not true, but, but it's just <laughs> like, okay. It's, uh, it's, it's something to, to remember. Head, see? The head brings the shoulders. And the shoulders bring the knees, and the knees bring the toes, and the head just is along for the ride. That's the main, main pressure. So when you rotate, head, shoulders, knees and toes, start with your eyes your nose and the rest follows. And if you do this, if someone puts his finger on my nose and I don't roll it my head first, I will get all work and I push this way and I roll it and I injure my neck. So it's like from the head first. Got it? Go, continue. Go. Thank you.